Hi Floss Tube, Sloan and the Ladybird Stitcher. Today is Friday the 3rd of May and it has been about four weeks since my last update. So this is my April 2019 update. I missed a couple of weeks ago basically because it was a good Friday. I completely forgotten that that would that the two weeks after my previous video would fall on Good Friday and my husband and daughter were home so um, it wasn't really a good time to film and then I uh, last week I didn't really have time and so I'm filming now. I'm kind of thinking maybe for May I might go to I might just leave my update until right at the end of mania we'll see how we go but I'm here now for my April update I'm not going to show you what I've stitched since the beginning of May because I'll leave that for the mania update so uh, with one exception but we'll get into that later um, so I hope everyone who celebrates Easter had a really pleasant happy Easter we were we had a really good time with my family on Saturday night and then my friend Robin came over for lunch on Sunday so we had a really good weekend and a really good Easter I hope everyone who celebrates Passover had a really good Passover and if not then I hope you enjoyed April I had an Easter FFO and a new start and that's this one it's called Chick Egg by Mel Hill and it's part of their spring bouquet collection and that's how I finished it just um, it, it suggests to finish it on a magnet a fridge magnet and they provide a magnet to attach to the back but I prefer it to just have be a hanger so I, I might actually increase the the um, length of the loop there because it is quite short but um, at the moment I'm considering that as an FFO so that's one of the books and since I've finished that I'm going to give this pattern away um, I tend to keep all the beads so I've kept the beads um, but the pattern is has not been um, written on there was a scribble when I first got it um, I bought this new and the front of the pattern has a little scribble up there. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I don't know if I was testing my pen. I don't think so though. I don't tend to do that on patterns, but um, I don't know what that is, but that's how the pattern is. The magnet's still there and some of the threads still there. So um, I will post anywhere in the world. Don't mention the word giveaway. If you enter, Please be a subscriber and if you're not over 18, please have your parents' permission to provide your address. Tell me what your favourite spring thing to do is or what your favourite thing about spring is, I guess. Um, it's not spring here, it's autumn, but I know most of the world is having spring at the moment. So, um, And this will be, I know it's a bit late for Easter, but... If you want to stitch it, it would be good for next Easter. So if you want to participate in that, tell me what your favourite thing about spring is. And I will draw that at the end of May. I'll give you a whole month because May is busy. So um, 31st of May, Sydney time. Okay, I also stitched on uh, the Prairie Schooler alphabet and I was stitching on Q for quilting. Yep, Q for quilting there. So here's what, what it looked like the last time you saw it. And there it is now. So that whole section is finished now. And I'm about to start on the last third of this project which I'll do. I will start that next month. I do have to make up for May because I'm not intending to stitch on this during May. So I've left it on my wheel and maybe it'll come up at some point soon. But that's okay if it doesn't. I've got another plan which I won't go into at the moment. I also stitched on my Heaven and Earth Designs Stocking Faithful Friends and here's what it, looked like, what it will look like when it's finished. And here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And 
and here it is now. I won't take it out of the frame just yet, but I'm working on this one. I showed it in my Mania plans. I think it was just up to about there or I was still finishing off this column, but I did that and on the 1st of May I started with um, up here. So I'm doing 200 stitches a day up until Sunday I think and then after that I'll go to 100 stitches a day and hopefully get me my 3,600 stitches for the month for full coverage fanatics. So that's where that is and I'm hoping to finish that one this year as part of my stitch 9 challenge. I also worked on Autumn Queen by Mirabilia and this one because I worked on this because it's autumn and I've now spent two weeks on this throughout the year. I'll show you what it looked like the last time you saw it. And here it is now. And this is on 28 count Lugana in Rocket Queen by Colour Cascade Fabrics. Absolutely love this. She's beautiful. She has quite a bit of chronic in there and whisper thread there, which I'm in I'm okay with. I'm enjoying it now that I've cut down to one one strand. I was using two strands uh, in this section, but it was getting way too hard to do that. So a lot of people told me that they only use one strand, so I've decided that that's good enough for me and that's what I'm doing and I'm really enjoying it. Only use short lengths if you are using whisper thread because it does tend to fray a bit um, as it goes through the fabric so you don't want to use a long length but I'm finding it okay to work with. So yeah all she needs up the top now is beads but the whole front of the pattern, the pattern is front and back, um, one page front and back. So this is the whole front page done now. So that's where I wanted to get to by the end of this year. So that will be put away until next autumn. And I keep forgetting to mention, but this is the sale I'm doing with Belinda Aussie Stitcher. Hi Belinda. Uh, it was her idea to start all our, all the seasonal queens. I think it was December, 2017 to start um, our summer queen in the beginning of December. So we're obviously doing them um, based on the seasons in Australia and uh, it was a really good idea and once I had all the queens I decided to participate in that so thank you for that idea Belinda and I know a lot of you other people are participating in that as well. Um, another one I stitched on was for Jessie Marie's birthday. Hi Jessie, happy birthday. Um, she had her birthday last week and she said to stitch on anything that was meaningful and I decided to stitch on Juliet by Tilton Crafts which will look like this when it's finished. And here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And there it is now. So I think basically in the three days I worked on it, I think I did a column on that one. I think that's page seven I'm working on now. This being page six down here and I'm working on page seven now. Still loving this one, but I have my goal for this year is just to do one page, so I still need to go back and finish that page. But I'm still loving this one. Um, the reason I worked on this one for that challenge or for that sale was um, it reminds me of Jessie in some ways. I know she likes Takaki, who is the artist of this one. She's just bought a piece also by the same artist, and I um, I know she likes storytelling and of course this is based on Romeo and Juliet so yeah so I thought that would be appropriate for Jessie's birthday so love the colours beautiful piece I think Tilton Craft may still have a few of these left so have a look on their website I'll put, I'll put a link below if you're interested so that's all my whips 
Um, I had a little bit of haul, not too much, but I got my next instalment of the Song, uh, Songbirds Garden series. This is number nine by Cottage Garden Samplings. It's called There is Beauty in Simplicity. Really pretty. I love these. Really looking forward to be able to start those, but I'm just so busy at the moment. <laughs> um, one of the stores here in Australia, I think they're in Tasmania, they had 30% off all Mirabilia's in stock for Easter. And that included the embellishment packs. So I decided to buy the December Blue Topaz, which was, I think this was the new release for March, I think. Yeah, April was the Nora, was the Nora Corbett's. I think this was the March one. So um, December is my birth month and I really like this, the fairy for it. Um, it says, strands of dusty blue crystals trail behind her like fireworks. And it, that's all it says, MD162. And I got the embellishment pack, which was also on sale. So I just need fabric for that, which I'll probably find in my stash. So that's ready to go when I choose to start another Mirabilia. And then I went to, my husband had a job to do in Mittagong, which is where Victoria House Needle works, my LNS is. And I decided to, he was going to go down, at, it was after lunch, and he was going to come back on the same day. And I thought, I'm, I'll just come down with you. There's a park across the road from that LNS where my daughter likes to play. So I thought, um, after I look in the shop, I'll take her for a little play. And that's what we did. And we came back home with him. So... When I was at Victoria House Needleworks, I knew that they had this, and it's the cardboard version. It's the original, and um, I really wanted it. I left it there last time because of what it says up the top. Button up to the chin till May comes in, till May comes in, and of course, um, when May comes in in Australia, it starts to get cooler. So it didn't really apply, but I just thought. I could change May to spring. There's plenty of room there to do that. So I went back and I hope that they'd still have it and they did. So I bought it. I know you can get this as a reprint now, but I'm really happy to have the original. They also had this one. I've never seen this one before. It's called I The Wed. It's part of the Remember Me series a series of nine family history patterns and it says i the wed there it's by blackbird designs i didn't say that it says i the wed there but i don't think I'll, I'll put that there i might just put i don't know i might i might even just try and stitch sheep on there or something um there's nothing really in it to suggest that it's a wedding sampler other than that little blurb there I've already stitched a wedding piece for my husband and I, so I don't really want to make this one another wedding piece. So I'll see. Um, I'm not going to start it anytime soon, so I've got plenty of time to think about that. But I didn't want to leave it there because I don't think it's still available. Um, I'm not sure when the copyright is. 2008, so yeah, it's probably out of print. Yeah, I thought that was really cute. I always like houses. I love stitching houses, so. And then I needed a piece of 40 count fabric. And I just bought one in antique white. So um, that's for one of my patterns in my stash, which I can't remember right off the top of my head. I also got this, which is for, I think Tudor Maidens requires this. It's number 21 DMC. So it's a really pretty color. Showing up a little more red than it, Actually, is it's more of a dusty rose. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, that's it for stitching. Um, my plans are basically my mania plans, which I posted about on Tuesday, if you want to go back and see that video. If not, it's basically I'm still stitching on the stocking, Faithful Friends, and working on some of my Mirabilia patterns. I read four books during April and I enjoyed all four of them. The first one was The Walls of Luca by Steve Fisioc. Luca is a walled city in Italy 
And this book was set in the First World War and is or straight after the First World War and is surrounded by, um, it's set on a vineyard in, or just outside the walls of Lucca. And it kind of starts looking at the rise of um, fascism in Italy. I, I really enjoyed it. The only thing I didn't like about it was it, it kind of went through so many things. It covered so many different themes. And just as you thought one one thing was kind of happening, it would kind of start on another thing. And it was it was just really it was a very busy book. There was a lot going on. It was quite thick from memory. Um well it was on my Kindle, but it did take me a while to read. I did enjoy it, but yeah, just a lot going on. So yeah um if you're interested in winemaking there's a lot about that there is um a lady who has grown up in the nunnery which is next to this vineyard and she helps out a lot and becomes a part of that vineyard um yeah it, it's a good book but yeah a lot going on so i did like that one but i'll probably give it about three stars Next book I read was The Last of the Romanov Dancers by Kerry Turner. Love this book. It was really, really good. I didn't know much about the Romanov family in Russia, um, but I've since read up a lot about, about them as well as what I learned in this book. So I'm, I'm happy to know more about, those, about them or about that family and what happened to them. Um, the, Rom the Last of the Romanov Dancers is about a book it is about a book it's about it's a book about the dances that the Romanov family I guess they sponsored um they often asked for performances from these dances and it was probably the most prestigious dance company or ballet company in Russia at the time the male dancers were exempt from participating in war um simply because they were dancers for the royal family and it was surrounding the uprising of the um the re rebellion against the war in russia and when the romanov family was slaughtered so um it was a really really good book i really enjoyed it um probably a four and a half star for that one i also read the pearl thief by fiona mcintosh um, she is an Australian author. I read The Perfumer's Secret, I think, was also by her. I read that earlier this year or late last year and really enjoyed it. So I thought I'd try another one of hers. The Pearl Thief is set in uh, 1960s, but is based around a woman who has grown up um, since World War II and who suffered a great loss during World War II. Her family... She is a, a jeweller and she knows a lot about um, history of jewellery and um, comes across a, a set of jewellery or a, a string of pearls that once belonged to her family but was stolen during the war. And um, it just tra it, it kind of follows her throughout the book on trying to get revenge on the person who stole it from her and who took um, so much from her and her family and as well as other people who also want their revenge on this person so a little bit about uh, World War Two in it she she was a Jewish Czechoslovakian and um, it goes into the German occupation of Czechoslovakia at that time uh, really quite sad because of what happened to her and a lot of other Jewish people during that time but um, really worth reading. I really enjoyed it. I also read, um, I didn't write it here, but I also read um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I have read it before. I read it when it first came out, um, but there was a lot going on in my life at that time. So I kind of, I read it, it was just another book. I didn't really get, get into it. I have seen so many of you working on um, the homework given by the famous group um, of magical stitches and 
and books I, I'm not sure sorry I can't remember the name of that that um, group I'm not a member simply because I don't like counting stitches unless I'm counting in um, 10 by 10 blocks and um, also I'm, I wasn't that much into Harry Potter as a lot of you are um, I do like Harry Potter and I liked it this second time I read it I will probably go on to read the other books but it's not it's still not I'm not going to become fanatical about it um, yeah I, I enjoyed it but I'm not I don't probably not as much as so many of other people do nothing wrong with it it's just um, I did enjoy it it's just I've read so many better books <laughs> um, not better but probably um, more suited to what I'm interested in I guess um, I probably won't join that that group simply because like I said I didn't enjoy I don't enjoy counting my stitches um, and I know that that requires a lot of counting also because I'm not that into Harry Potter again I like it but not as much as a lot of other people do but also I think the main reason is because like I mentioned on Tuesday in my previous video I have so many goals this year that I want to get through and I don't want to be dictated on what I can work on each and every week I'd rather just work on what what's going to help me get through to my goals so I think that's the main reason that I'm not in that group but I, I recognize how what a great wonderful group it is and how much fun it is I just wish it was maybe next year um, where I might be a little bit more relaxed about the number of whips I have um, because I am trying to whip down at the moment and so I'm trying to focus on the ones that I have planned to finish um, before the end of the year so yeah um, that's all I've got for you today Thank you so much for watching thank you for subscribing and commenting for all your support and if you are interested in this mill hill kit uh, please let me know what you like about spring and i will draw that by the end of may at the end of may um, i might also include another mill hill chart in there um, so this is just reiterating this is not the whole kit it's just the chart and the magnet um, I may also throw in another Mill Hill chart uh, with that I really enjoyed stitching it you will need to source your own beads but um, they shouldn't be too hard to come by um, so yeah please um, if you have any questions please don't forget, don't hesitate to leave me a comment um, don't hesitate to leave me a comment if you just want to chat about something that I mentioned um, I love reading your comments and now I'm rambling so I'm gonna say goodbye and I will see you probably at the end of May or the beginning of June so enjoy your month enjoy mania to those participating and stay safe and I'll talk to you soon bye everyone